You have been summoned to Alexandria, a city of colored lights and curious histories. An old friend needs you to track down a woman. She's probably in trouble, and probably trouble herself. Cherche la femme, the saying goes. But what does the lady look for? You all find yourselves at Platform 2 at Charing Cross. You have been given not only a letter that has summoned you here, but a first-class train ticket to board the Taurus Express run, th run through Whitlitz, also known as the Orient Express. But of course, nothing bad ever happens upon the Orient Express. The first to arrive was a rather curious sight of Le of Miss Aurora Roberts. Miss Roberts, would you please go ahead and describe yourselves for those at home? Of course. Um, Aurora is fairly tall for a um, uh, for a lady, especially back in the day. She stands at roughly five foot seven. Um, wearing a long black evening gown beaded with small crystals and it has a little bit of fringe at the end. She wears a small kitten heel which maybe adds an inch or two to the height. So maybe five foot seven is a realistic height. Maybe it's just the, uh, the luck of the heel. Um, her hair is short and black and it is worn in this in this tight wave with a um um with a bit of a headband attached with a feather that um kind of crosses her forehead she has a a cigarette in her hand and in the other hand she carries a, a fan that's made of um up of green and gold feathers um kind of to match the the headband that she wears um around her waist is a small belt that carries small bits and bubbles um and uh and she has her luggage right next to her in a um in a bag that she kind of keeps at her side that contains all of her necessities um you know things that <laughs> every medium needs in their in their uh in their repertoire um she wears a bit of a more stoic expression, and her face is lightly painted with um, a, a, a nice dark, dark colored lip and a green eye to kind of pair the whole black, green, and gold look together. Wonderful. Uh, interesting to you, though perhaps you saw this in a dream as well, you see approaching you is a rather important socialite within London's social circles. Lady Margaret Wyndham, would you please describe yourself for those at home? Yes. Um, Margaret Wyndham is five foot even, pale of skin, has short, very well styled red curls. Um, clearly her lady's maid put in a good bit of time on them this morning. Um, she has pearls around her throat and in a headband around her forehead and a long green evening gown with elbow length black gloves and a cigarette carried in a long dramatic holder. Um, she's not wearing a lot of makeup. It's very subtle. Um, despite the style typically calling for it, she's found that it washes her out. Um, and her face carries a look of someone who is positively bored with the rather bleak surroundings for the morning. Clearly she'd be anywhere, she'd rather be anywhere else. Well, while the card location is nothing to write home about, at least there is a possibility of something more exciting happening as you see that one of the most up-and-coming mediums in the occult circles and within the circuit that of performances in London that Miss Aurora Roberts is also to be boarding the train with you as well as a very well respected dancer Francois please describe yourself for the those watching at home Salut everyone uh, Francois Brisbois also known as Francis Brisby among the English speaking crowds is a professional dancer in his early 30s. He is tall, lithe, 
uh, just perfect for the forms of dance he practices, such as uh, ballet or some new forms like uh, jazz. So he is wearing a uh, white shirt with a red vest on top of it, finished with a red bow tie and a uh, pinstriped uh, pants, uh, a pair of pinstriped pants. He has green eyes, um, slick brown hair, and uh, fair skin. Although you couldn't notice it, he is actually very close to bankrupt, but he keeps all his finery on him to pretend that he is still very affluent. As one must in the social circles of the day and age. As you are getting your things put on board, uh, you are bumped into by someone who is just working to make their way, not out of any sort of cruelty, but perhaps just out of a f intense focus. Clara Costello, please go ahead and describe yourself for those at home. All right, let's see if I can uh, manage to keep up a voice for the entire time. I doubt I can. So Clara Castillo is dressed in a fairly simple uh, vest and a button-up shirt, very Irish, um, uh, with a trench coat over it. Um, and then as she bumps into Francois, um, the, uh, like the inside, like her lapel almost, uh, shifts out of the way and you can see a quick glint of steel, um, which she quickly tries to cover up as she walks by. Um, her hair is, falls just a bit below her shoulders, uh, dark brown, not anything terribly exciting, um. And you can clearly tell she's trying to avoid meeting anybody's eyes, trying to keep to herself as she's walking through the car. As you arrive at your particular box in the first class car, you notice that there is someone who is already there, who seems to be reading a very curious volume. Miss Warner. If you would please describe yourself for those at home. Um, hello. Uh, my name is Jade, Jade Warner. Um, Jade is a brown skinned woman. Um, she's five foot seven. Although when she's around most people, she, tr the way she shrinks within herself or the way she acts makes it seem like she's much shorter than she is. Um, she's pretty, um, Lith, I would say. Not you know, maybe it's because she doesn't eat enough, or maybe it's because she spends most of her time in her study just reading, and she hardly gets any sleep. So you could see that she also kind of has like dark shadow under her eyes. She wears um, large circle uh, rimmed gra uh, glasses, and uh, besides that, she has like a blackish brown curly hair that's pull, pulled back into a low ponytail and she, she the stuff around her shows that she has money but you can see the dress that she's wearing is just a simple green dress because she tries to look as the least she tries to blend into the wall so she can focus on her books and really not be bothered much or pull much attention to herself so she's probably like tucked into the corner, like fully reading this book, hoping no one even breathes on her. Which one finds difficult to focus on the first volume of Traveling at Night, when not only is there Miss Castillo who arrives at the box, but after their luggage is taken care of, Mr. Mr. Der Brisby, Lady Wyndham, and Miss Roberts all also make their way to the same box. <sighs> Lovely, I wasn't expecting to be sharing this box with so many people. Me neither. Um, uh, I, I say, can... neither, neither was I. Um, Jade is going to like scoot and like shuffle some of her stuff over to make space for everyone. Um, but mostly, she's really just trying to tuck herself as close to the wall slash window as possible. 
I do say, it can't be that bad. I mean, who knows? Uh, we all might be here for something um, important. Um, Lady Wyndham, I know your your uh, your family is um, well, they are quite important, aren't they? I suppose, in the sense that most people with titles are. I try not to bother myself too much with family business, though. When you're Miss Roberts, yes? Mm, that is correct. Um, uh, up in coming medium at your, at your uh, service, if anybody... Would like their fortune told, or if they have a ghost that they needed um, spooked away, that's uh, that's kind of where my line of work lies, right? <laughs> have you, um, <clears throat> have you actually seen ghosts? Oh well, of course, love. Uh, every day of my every day that I wake up, they're, they're there, unfortunately, but nothing in that uh, I can't handle, of course. Do you, um, uh, Jade is gonna look at the group for a bit and then, uh, like, look like she's tucking back into herself, but then, like, speak up a little. Do you also, um, see them in, like, dreams and stuff? Like, do you, does your vision, or your, whatever it is you do, work with dreams? Hmm. Actually, yes, they, 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 they do. Yes, um, I, you know, something spoke to me in a dream, uh, last night that I'd be sharing a little space with, uh, um, four very interesting individuals, um, and, uh, well, my visions have yet to prove incorrect, so... I expect interesting things from the four of you. <laughs> well, uh, she's going to close her book, but one finger will still stay in it, holding it and hold out a hand and go, uh, she's going to hold out a hand, but then look at the rest of the group and kind of like pull her hand back and look and like straighten up herself a little bit and sit up and go, uh, Jade Warner. Uh, I'm Jade Warner. Nice to, um, meet you all. And you, um, American? Um, no, but uh, I've been around some. Hmm. Yeah. Uh, uh and uh, you all are? And uh, Lady Margaret Wyndham. Oh. My father has spoken about you before. Well, not you, but my fa my your family. I mean, I guess you as well, because you're you're not too discreet on what you do or the way you act or, um, uh. Her eyebrows go up at that. Uh, I I, I just means because um, you like go out a lot and party and um. At least stuff. you're honest. Hmm. It's the only thing I, I can be. It's true. I've never put much stock in discretion. Much to my father's chagrin, she'll sort of smile to herself, like she's quite <laughs> pleased with the fact that she gives her parents uh, stress. Um, and, and you guys? Mr. Mm. Oh, I've forgotten your name, but I've seen you perform before. Oh, uh, we might have. Uh, Je suis François. I am a dancer from uh, Paris, uh, Paris. <clears throat> ah. uh, I believe you've seen me at uh, Piccadilly uh, Theatre. Positively chic. Pardon? Oh, I'm um, sorry. It means you're handsome, darling. Oh, merci. Thank you. Thank you, madame. And uh, at this point, uh, Francois is going to nod to uh, Clara, who's 
who he literally bumped into uh, and uh, noticed her uh, flash of steel. Uh, he's going to say to her, uh, well prepared for the dangers, uh, madame. I'm always prepared. I don't know when somebody's going to try to take advantage of me in one way or another. I believe right. our... Uh, By the way. I believe our companions are quite civilized and uh, well behaved in uh, etiquette. Yeah, you'd be surprised how quickly something like that can change. Mm-hmm. We, oui, I uh, cannot disagree. There are many who, many critics who find my performance lackluster and they have come with less than savory uh, responses. Well, clearly, darling, you are wasted on your audience. Oh, uh, uh, no, definitely not. Many, uh, many still see the uh, arts. Hmm. With the brief introductions over, you all hear the train whistle go off, and with a very small lurch forward, the the traveling begins. Miss Aurora Roberts, would you do us the honor of reading the first paragraph of the letter that you all received from Lady Farouk? My dear friend, my time in Alexandria is nearly over, but before I depart, I must beg for a favor from you. It is a great imposition, but you are exactly the sort of person to help. My sister, of whom you will have uh, ha um, have rarely, if even, heard me speak of, needs finding. She's in trouble, and she has vanished. Outside of the window, after a short bit of time, you all find yourself in Paris. Francois is able to stretch his legs back in his hometown for a short while. Uh, seeing the city full of socialists, communists, bookshops, gaunt artists, bicycles, and cafes sp spilling coffee. Once you all return back to your uh, box, you find that there is a uh, ribbon-tied box of curry macarons for everyone in the compartments after breakfast. Miss Roberts, if you would, please, the second paragraph. My name is Audrey Leigh Howard. She has not been seen since the 3rd of June, and my letters to her are to her Maltese address and returned undelivered. Whatever has happened is serious. As you all look out the window yet again, some of you smoking, some of you focusing on your reading, you see that you are in Venice. Foggy, pale, splashing waves, purring vaporettos, the scent of seaweed, and unfortunately of sewage but it is an evening of whist and piquet or quiet reading in the gentle glow of in the after dinner car the third paragraph if you would i believe she's in danger and may conceal herself from even her friends all i know is that she's been traveling here to alexandria and must be apprehended please find my sister if she's not discovered i fear something terrible cannot bear to write it down. You would not believe it anyway. Outside is the city of Belgrade, a city of no history in the rain. Horses, cabbies, men in overcoats, a clock striking seven. You overhear the remonstrations by the chef de brigade of a squirming severe, whose lily white uniform has been smudged by engine soot moments before dinner. The fourth paragraph, if you would. For my part, I am forced to leave Alexandria for Jerusalem. An unpleasant and pulmonologist pul <laughs> told me that my lungs are worse than expected. He said I would likely die. I'm old and I've lived my life, but one is never truly prepared for the last bony tap on the shoulder. So I have been sent to a specialist and um, to a specialist sanatorium, where I will either heal or decease. 
With that somber note, you find yourselves in Istanbul, the bustling Grand Bazaar, sudden silent dazzle of the Golden Horn, a city of a hundred thousand cats. Small ginger tom, a small ginger tom leaps into a carriage windowsill and purrs, allowing those in the box to stroke it until the train's departing whistle, in which case it falls away. The next paragraph, please. I feel in my soul, perhaps more accurately my lungs, that I shall die, but my darling Moish will be there to greet me on the other side. Death shall mend one of the two great pains in my life, to live in such a beautiful city, but for so many years without him. The final stop before reaching Alexandria is Haifa, the land of the Crusades, the house of Israel, and a place containing hollowed relics of the Christian dawn. The lunch served to you is salt baked turbo with clams and leeks, and as the train departs you can see moonlight on the Mediterranean, the deep red glow of cigars at night. The final paragraph, please. I write in haste and digress. Please, come to Alexandria as soon as you can. I've enclosed keys to my house in Mahanan Bay, where you and your associates are welcome to stay. It is great and noble enterprise you undertake. May God preserve my sister until you can. Most gratefully and faithfully yours, Loretta. As you find yourselves finally pulling into Alexandria, feeling the rather intense heat in the dusty dusk that awaits you. The train blows its whistle one last time. It is Friday, June 28th. Your luggage is brought to all of you so that way you are able to disembark with relative ease. Customs are fairly easy to get through. A rather well-kept man with golden skin and well-kept well hair greets you all and runs the th thorough but general checks of your uh, papers and passports. You can see out, out of the train station there is the sandy yard enclosed by iron, iron railings. You can see societies holding out cups of water for new arrivals and for workers. Uh, Berbers selling tobacco wrapped in leaves and Fella boys, the Egyptian farmhands flogging vegetables. You can hear the st the hiss of steam of other locomotives, the cries of hawkers, of t of turtle doves, camels lapping at a trough, and the call of distant wazin. And waiting for you are the ranks of taxicabs and horse-drawn carriages, many of them calling out in English. Arabic, French, hoping to, hoping someone will approach them. The moment that you step outside of the station, however, you are positively swarmed with a young individuals, several young men, women, largely children, or barely above children, uh, trying to offer you maps or small trinkets to welcome you to Alexandria, or hoping that you might give them some pittance. Uh, depending on how you would like to get through them, I will accept whatever skills or statistic roles you will offer. Hmm. Being hmm, larger than life herself, um, I think Aurora would uh, would it, it kind of try to gracefully make her way through the through the crowd. Um, anytime um someone tries to stop her, she'll more so like give like a very proud wave and then kind of carry on um um every every now and again she might stop and pretend to look but she's not very uh, interested in buying um the wares of the locals not yet at least 
Fair enough. Uh, give me a stagecraft roll just to see if you're able to glide your way through and try without coming off as being put off by the locals. Is that uh, okay? Yep. Yeah. All right. Cool. Forty-two. Um, that is a success. You're able to very quickly make your way through, and not only that, you're able to make a way for your compatriots to join you as well. Quickly bypassing uh, the large group of children that had, that had swarmed you, they quickly find other individuals, uh, incoming British officers or those who are from Alexandria originally and are now coming home. You're able to quickly find your way to a horse-drawn carriage, a rather large carriage, large, looks like it's largely meant for bigger groups, and a uh, rather young, somewhat laconic-looking uh, man in a very nice suit for the time, despite it being rather dusty, a uh, very broad and bushy mustache and simple uh, spectacles on his eyes. He looks out to all of you and smiles and waves you forward. It's like, by, by all means, please, uh, let me get your bags for you. As he moves to uh, almost immediately begin to uh, offer to take your bags to put into the back of the larger uh, cart. Um, Jade will allow her, like general bags like clothes and stuff to be taken but anything that had like books which was probably like an immediate bag she had on her she's like oh i i i can take this thank you though very well uh i am mamut you can ask you can uh go ahead and call me uh mr mamut if you like but if you like but if also i also go by bruno to my friends and I would like to think that hopefully in the time in Alexandria, we will be friends. And he uh, raises his hand and says, Also, need not worry, for your first ride, Alexandria welcomes you. As he uh, offers a hand to also help people into the cart. I will let him help me up and will thank him in Arabic. Ah, it is so good to see more people learning our tongue. It will be wondrous, intelligent conversation. A rare treat for me, unfortunately. <laughs> Jade will do the same, but probably significantly worse. <laughs> she only learned a little bit of Arabic from her mother. He is still smiling as he is. More, he looks more impressed by the fact that you that there is an attempt to learn his language and speak his language, as opposed to anything else. Uh, as he helps you up, you see that there is uh, a number of papers from inside his jacket that sort sort of rustle against his uh, chest as he helps you into the carriage. Hmm. He does all of mo pretty much all of the heavy lifting himself. No one else is needs to lift a finger as he is rather attentive and quick with his movements. And once everyone is inside, he hops up into the uh, driver's seat and just looks back and says, So where is it that I will be taking you in our lovely city? I'd give him the address. Assuming that we have the address. Yeah, you do. You The uh, uh, letter actually came with the address as well. He says, Ah, Maharm Bay. That is a rather affluent section of the city. You must know someone who is of great importance then. One can <laughs> say that. Well, it would be a pleasure to take you there. And if you wish I can stay on as retainer for ink for uh, all future trips that you must must take throughout the city for only one pound a day I would be glad to act as your guide though of course I will stay outside unless you wish me to attend to you 
inside of uh, whatever location it is that you wish me to uh, help you traverse to. Uh, it's most kind of you, uh, Mahmoud. Uh, Francois is gonna uh, look inside the car. Uh, what does it look like inside the car? Is it like a fancy car, or is it like a? Uh, it is a open uh, horse-drawn carriage. Uh, the okay. sides themselves are open, though they also have uh, e these uh, rope uh, barriers to sort of help keep people stay within. The seats themselves are fairly comfortable, uh, if maybe a little worn from the elements and from age. Uh, if you, as you look to Mahmoud, you also notice that uh, his suit looks a little bit better than what one would expect from a uh, taxi cab driver or a uh, carriage driver, as well as his spectacles looking a bit more, uh, they look a little bit like they are a mix of fashion and, fo and uh, purpose as opposed to just being one or the other. Right. Uh, Mahmoud, you're... Uh, you're from the city. Yes, born, born and raised in Alexandria, and what a city to be born in. He just looks around in this sort of, like, whimsical love of the city. And I see you've uh, made a successful living in your home city. Uh, yes, though times have been a bit difficult. I've only rather recently picked up the uh, carriage business as he snaps the reins and the uh, travel begins to Maharambe. I actually was uh, originally a litigant for some time. A lawyer. We oui. yeah, yes. Is that so? What, what, uh, what legal trouble do people run into here? Oh, not so much anymore, unfortunately. There was a lot of business to be had when the, uh, British Empire was still overseeing things, but now that we have declared our independence, not too many people are uh, causing trouble nowadays. Things seem to have calmed down quite a bit. Good, good for good. the city as a whole, uh, unfortunately bad for business, which is why now I uh, have intelligent conversation with wonderful arrivals to, arrivals to our city. Aha, uh -huh. I see that would be better. That is indeed good for all of us. Indeed, indeed. Uh, as you are driving along, the dusk seems to begin to give in to the dim of night. You can still see there are uh, lamps and lanterns along the city streets and even uh, in the residential areas that allow you to uh, enjoy the quiet streets. Uh, the deep purple shadows of uh, the low v visibility of night beginning to play out along the buildings around you. It's a rather brief ride out towards uh, the, the building. And as you uh, begin to approach, he looks up and says, oh, this is the home of Lady and Dr. Farouk. You all, you all are very influential to know the great Lady Farouk and the late doctor. May the p powers that be watch over his soul. Well, they are dear friends. I had helped uh, the occasional small little medical uh, law scuffle f for Dr. Farouk. Uh, not anything too untoward, it's just that some people did not take well to his focus on up his obstetrics. Uh, obstetrics being the, pra the practice of, the medical practice of helping, of aiding in childbirth. Hmm. He Oh, what was the procedure that he was focusing on? I believe he's called it cesarean sections? Oh, Me I've read about the, uh, uh, I've read about those and the the work or the, the people have been putting into doing something like that. It's really interesting. 
A bit gruesome, oh. but interesting. I unfortunately have no mind for the medical field. Uh, he had a bit of trouble when some people were saying that such intense and traumatic acts were unnecessary. But he has had, when he was alive, he had a very, basically spotless record. There were, there was never any loss of the mother or anything. I think people are just afraid of progress. Mm hmm. Yeah. Um, usually, um, yes. Uh, modern medicine is, um, very, hmm. Gosh, maybe. Um, I uh, can't pretend that I'm an expert on it, of course, but it's always interesting to um, see or read about. Mm -hmm. yes, it's quite fascinating the things people can come back from now that they wouldn't have been able to five, ten years ago. It is Beauties true. and wonders of modern medicine, I guess. And experimentation. <clears throat> I do hope that uh, the mo wonders of modern medicine are able to aid Lady Farouk. I believe I had last heard from her when she was beginning to set off for Jerusalem. The poor madam, I believe, was suffering from something akin to consumption. So how do you all know uh, the great la uh, Lady Farouk? Uh, she uh, she was an alumni from my old school, and uh, she awarded me the Miss Joyful Prize for my Raffia work, um, or for my work, whatever. Um, yeah, she uh, she was at my old school and I got an award from her and every now and then she checks in on my academic career but um not much since then I did some business with Miss Farouk uh, a while back and she's kept up for Christmas but that's about it. She is also a patron of the arts. She has visited my performance in Piccadilly Theatre in London. Also once visited in my hometown, Paris. Hmm. Well, for me, um, her and I met when she, uh, when she came to one of my, um, to my private seance, um, well, we uh, we both had one particular countess who we both had a slight distaste for and kind of bonded when I um accidentally made said countess scream so hard that she uh, fell face first into a small bowl of soup. We've been close dear friends ever since. <laughs> <laughs> An enemy of my enemy, as one would say. I met her on a picnic. It was scandalously covered in the press the next day. And she thought it was positively droll what mischief we made together with finger sandwiches. And we've been close pen pals ever since. To know her so closely for mo most of you, it is, it is good to know such good people. Miss Farouk did not truck with anything but the best. Of course, darling. Yeah. Um. So you said you haven't seen her lately, correct? Since she since she's left, or something like that. Yes, she left fairly recently for Jerusalem. I believe she was going to a. Uh, Hopefully, more state-of-the-art sanitarium to be able to hopefully get her, uh, whatever foulness was in her lungs dealt with. 
or perhaps to and he looks uh, rather somber this at this uh, perhaps to find a bit of comfort before she is reunited with Dr. Moish. So this is um, maybe random, but and I don't know how often you're in this part of town, but have you seen anyone else come here? Or has the house just le- been left unattended? Jade, if you could please give me a uh, <laughs> roll. We'll go ahead and call it... Oh, what shall we call it? We'll go ahead and call it a... Uh... Let's call it an intelligence roll. Intelligence, intelligence. Okay. Cool beans. Hmm. Botchin. One D hundred, right? One Correct. Hundred. Wow. He looks back at you and looks a little perplexed before he uh, just shakes his head. I actually don't come around here too often, but occasionally I aid others who have been enjoying the wonders of Alexandria uh, into the night to return to their homes. I've not seen anyone come this way, though again, I have not been here for... When was the last trip? Yes, it was two days ago. I was helping a uh, young British couple come back home after a rather <laughs> scandalous party. I was mm. very quick to ensure the that they were not spotted. Kind. Of course, though, these two were hoping to not be spotted by the local reporters. If only just because uh, I do believe that one of them has someone back in London. Huh? Oh. How exciting. Are For them, possibly. Here? Uh, possibly. It has been a, f- a few days, though, again, I don't make my way out here too often unless I am paid handsomely at rather off hours. Hmm. Understood. Uh, thank you. Um, Mr. Bruno. Of course. Please, just Bruno is fine. Uh, as you come up to the last stretch of the trip, you see that uh, there is a rather large, but somewhat modest, two-story mansion with a grand garden of date palms and pepper trees, oleander plants, and a small lily pond with a glittering statue of a roaring lion within it that seems to watch over the entirety of the front yard. You see that the windows of it are all shuttered closed, and uh, uh, Bruno gets out of the uh, taxi cab, uh, gets out of the uh, carriage seat and will begin to uh, move the barriers aside. We have arrived. Uh, I wish you all a pleasant rest of the evening and again, I will be here tomorrow morning if you all wish to keep take me on as retainer so that way I may aid you in seeing as much of our beautiful city as possible. And again, welcome to Alexandria. Thank you. Well. He rather quickly begins to uh, unpack your all, all of your luggage, and he even uh, undoes a small uh, cart f- that is held underneath the carriage, like more on the uh, uh, the spokes of the wheels, and shows that he has put together essentially a board with a rather small wheels on it that allows one to uh, move luggage uh, rather quickly across the cobblestones. 
You all may use this if you wish to stop where you need, need not carry everything, of course. Thank you, Bruno. It was my, my pleasure, Miss Warner. Now, now here's a question. You said there were like papers in like on the inside of his jacket that we could see. Yes, you could uh, hear them rustling when he moved and such. Yes. Could I potentially feign tripping like towards him? And as I go to catch myself, grab those. <laughs> you absolutely could. We will go ahead and call that a we'll call that a scoundrel check. Well, it's a success, but barely. <laughs> uh, he quickly catches you uh, and he says, Oh, uh, uh, Miss Castillo, are you, are you all right? Oh, yes. Sorry, sorry. I, I lost my footing. I'm not used to carriages. Oh, it is quite all right. Uh, I just hope that uh, this will not, not be too big of an issue going forward. I would hate to... Uh, have to constantly be catching you. And he gives you a, a rather playful little side eye and wink. Yes, that would be quite unfortunate, wouldn't it? Uh, as he turns to uh, aid someone else, you have managed to uh, grab one of the papers from his uh, inside, the inside of his jacket. Lovely. Uh, as you look it over, it is written in Arabic. All right, I'll put it in my pocket for the time being. Fair enough. Uh, once everyone has managed, has stepped out of the carriage and he has put all of your uh, luggage on the small little uh, trolley, he bids you all a good rest of the evening and uh, gets back into the carriage and uh, trots away with it into the uh, rather misty evening. Hmm. Bit of a cakey to that one. And I'll kind of look over at Clara and, and wink. Well, he at least certainly seems to think so. Now then, you some of you at least can speak and potentially read Arabic, yes? Yes. Kinda. Wonderful. Um, shall we take this inside? I have something that I'd like for you to take a look at. Absolutely. And I'll kind of like turn to head towards the, the house, like ignoring the fact that my luggage is on the cart. <laughs> I'll leave it to somebody else to deal with. Um, you know, it's one wouldn't exactly call it spiffy, but um, hopefully at least it's clean on the inside. Yes. Yeah, it doesn't look like anyone has lived here for quite a few days, or a few that's, weeks. That's what I was concerned about. Mm. I worry a bit about the dust. As you all uh, approach the mansion as a whole, you see that while the windows are shuttered, the door, a rather large blue front door, is open. It is ever so slightly ajar. I will oh. frown a little bit as we get close and look back at the others. Hmm. That's not normal. No. No. Random open door, that's not conspicuous at all. No, especially since we were given a key, so presumably it was locked before we were coming here. Hey, fantastic. <laughs> Did um. she perhaps, um... I don't know. invite someone else and didn't mm. mention it. don't know i mean she feel like she would have told us it's not it's Lucas. you don't think maybe her sister came back already looking oh. for her i mean mm. maybe uh, there's only one way to check and she's gonna look at francois <laughs> yes madame um do you mind stepping ahead and just checking 
uh, uh, Francois at this point uh, has his luggage uh, case in one hand because he only has one luggage case. Uh, he's gonna take a few uh, tentative steps ahead. Uh, he's oh, gonna for hold... heaven's sake, does anyone have a gun? That would be quite uncivilized to walk into someone's dwelling with a weapon drawn, wouldn't it be? Except that the dwelling is supposed to be empty and the door's already open. Well, I'm nothing if not uncivilized. I draw my knife and walk towards the door. <laughs> Thank you. Alrighty. Uh, Miss Castillo, please give me a intelligence check. I was not the person that should be sent to do this. <laughs> <laughs> that might have actually been better if I did it. <laughs> hey, I succeeded. Oh, nice. All right. As you uh, come closer to the door, you notice something very peculiar. The door is still on its hinges, but if only just. And the brass door handle? has been crushed into a gnarled metal nub. And as you look closer, not only that, but you see the definite uh, indentation of, well, five small smooth indentations on the nub. Almost like a hand did this, but a rather small hand. Not one that you would expect for a large brute capable of such things as almost tearing a door down. Uh, just to clarify, the door isn't torn down, it's just slightly ajar, right? Yes, it, well, it is ajar. The door is ajar, but the it's only just barely on its hinges, and the door handle is basically crushed into being next to useless. Okay, okay, gotcha. Well, I'm going to go out on a limb and say that these weren't invited guests. Jade is definitely standing in the back and leaning around whoever's in front of her, and she's like, How do you know? Well, there's not exactly much of this door handle left. Maybe I can run back and get Mr. Bruno? I wouldn't do that. I don't trust him. Oh, why have, for heaven's sake, why not? Well, he did say that he usually only comes this way for quite the fee, yes? Hmm. But he brought us here for nothing. Hmm. That is true. You think whoever came into this house uninvited was in league with our driver? That's certainly not off the table. I should have stayed home. Um, Miss Warner. Mm -hmm. Could you please roll me an intelligence uh, check? (laughs) Sure can. Just copy and paste this. Sixty-six. That success. is a, that is not only a success; it is an astonishing success. Oh, nice! <laughs> Something grabs your attention about the little pond off to the side. Something beyond the natural world. As you get closer to it, you see that the statue is rather small. It only comes up to about your uh, abdomen, around your chest. But as you look across it, you see that inside, there is something within the lion's mouth. Um, Jade is going to push her glasses closer to her, like, face and kind of look around this and then take her book. Actually, no, she's not going to take her book. She's going to grab it with her hands because she doesn't want to ruin her book. Um, (laughs) She's going to go and grab it, whatever it's in its mouth with her hands. Please give me a physique roll. Oh, goodness. 
Oh, what? <laughs> That's not gonna happen. Um, control. Yeah, I significantly failed. As you try to reach in, and you manage to get a couple of fingers onto uh, whatever it is that is within the mouth, but it seems like almost that it was sealed in there, or almost as if the statue was built around it, and it just, you can't get a decent enough grip to bring strength enough to pull it from the lion's mouth. But as you look exasperated, you just uh, look about, and you look down into the water, and there's something off about your reflection. You almost think that your reflection looks younger as it smiles up at you. Hmm? She's gonna rub her eyes a little bit, cause she's like, she definitely knows she hasn't really been sleeping. So she's like, oh God, is my mind playing games with me again? Um. After rubbing your eyes and you're looking back down, the reflection looks fine but you are now at risk of fascination, and we will come to that at a later point. Okay. Back at the door. The way inside is dark. The lanterns do not look like they've been lit. This place does not have uh, electric lighting at the moment. It's all lamps and lanterns at the moment. And all of them are dark. You can see silhouettes, but not much detail without lighting them. None of you happened to bring a light, did you? I have a nighter. And I've got some candles and uh, a couple of matches. That would certainly be better than stumbling in the dark. I will produce my <laughs> pearl lighter. I expect it back when you're done. Mm. Of course. Moving inside to begin lighting the uh, lamps and lanterns, the light is warm and comforting, but the scene is not. It seems that the place itself has been ransacked, drawers left open, cupboards gaping wide, things thrown around. Everything looks like it has been tossed, as if someone was looking for something quite specific. At the moment, you are only in the uh, small foyer with a uh, set of stairs going upwards and a small hallway leading to the uh, water closet at the uh, directly in front of the entryway. To the left, there is a singular door, and to the right, there is a also another door, just immediately across from the the one on the left. I would like to move towards the door on the left. Very well. As you move to the move uh, across the door, you do not hear anything at the moment. Interesting. Are you going to open the door? Yeah. As you push the door open, you see that it is a living room, a large grand piano in the far corner from you a uh, hearth that is dark and cold. You see a small bookcase immediately to your right after entering, and a another door immediately across the room from you. This place also looks like it has been thrown a bit, but not as much. Everyone who is within the building, uh, this will be at a, a point where this Warner is able to rejoin the group. Everyone who might be looking, investigating throughout the house, please give me, uh, we'll call them intelligence rolls for now. Uh, 
Uh, did you say this is when Warren, uh, when I would have joined, or yes, you're haven't... able to uh, get back to rejoin the group as a whole. Copy. Uh, Sixty-nine. <laughs> nice. <laughs> nice. Nice. <laughs> oh my god. Yeah. Uh, for those who are watching, uh, for those who are watching in the audience, everybody in the uh, and basically almost everybody just reacted nice. Yep, there it is. There it is. <laughs> <laughs> so, could everyone please let me know if they have succeeded or failed on their intelligence checks? Um, I succeeded by quite a bit. I successfully failed. <laughs> Successful I... in one way, failure in another. Rolled an eighty-eight. Which is not good. Unfortunately, it is not. And I succeeded. <laughs> uh, this would be intelligence? Uh, this would be intelligence, or if you have a skill you think would be good for investigation, I will hear arguments. Uh -huh. um, mm -hmm. Can I... Can I burn one of our die? Everyone who wishes to be able to reroll, feel free, though... What, uh, mem what regard of the hour are you calling upon for this? Ooh, I think, you know, let's, let's call upon the door in the eye. And if I may, I think I'd like to roll one of those d20. Very well. Go ahead, and uh, before you roll it, you need to say what, uh, which digit you are trying to replace. I'd like to... Hmm. I'd like to replace the six. Very well. Feel free to roll. Actually, instead of rolling a d20, can I roll a... Can I roll a d4? You may. You can roll okay. any of the dice on the door... On the, uh, hour that you are pulling power from. Yes, I would like to re-roll... I'd like to re-roll that six with the d4. Feel free. Uh, I have also failed, and, uh, I will also like to re-roll a, uh, two d... A, uh, d4 from one of the two d4s in, uh, Door in the Eyes. You may also roll. Uh, remember, it's a... Yeah, definitely. One. So there that 69 turned into a 19. Very well. And, uh, Francois, you are able to do the same, and anyone who wishes to may pull the uh, dice from the regard. Uh, let's turn my three into a two, so that is a success now. That has utilized all of the D4s from the door and the eye. I would like to call upon the sun and rags uh, kind of using the cold and the like desolation in especially in the room I'm in in particular with the cold hearth to uh, use one of those d4s to reroll my 88 you're absolutely capable of calling upon the desolation of the dead sun and rags to bring you a little bit more truth in this location. And roll a d4. Oh, yeah. Very well. So, uh, it looks like everyone succeeded their various investigation roles. So, as everyone has succeeded, you all are looking about and you find various things. Uh, Aurora, mm. as you are in the foyer at the moment, 
you look about and you find that there is something at the bottom of the at the foot of the stairs it is a small bundled up piece of paper hmm. i will go and pick it up i have linked a new artifact in the references and announcements channel Hey, who very exciting. Uh Lady Wyndham. As yes, you are looking as you are looking about, you notice that uh there are several photos all along the wall. Some of them are askew, others have been knocked to the floor of a rather handsome middle aged Egyptian man, usually standing next to Loretta. You believe that this is Dr. Moishfruk, who was uh, Loretta's dear, recently departed husband. You see that they look like they've been thrown to the floor out of rage. Hmm. Uh, you also f see that there are a number of uh, certificates and awards on display all along the wall. Large most of them to Moish Farouk in relate in relation to his obst obstetrics career. Did I'd any like Oh, sorry. Uh I would I am just double checking. Did anyone get an astonishing success in that investigation? How do we know if we got astonishing? If you uh, got doubles under your uh under your uh, target. No, believe so. No. That's not All right. Uh, Miss Castillo, you notice that the uh, door to the to the room across from uh, the way you came in from the uh, foyer is locked, uh, and. It, it seems to have been one of the few places that's locked that was left uh, unmarked. If someone were to have a set of lockpicks, they could attempt to make their way inside. Would that be would that be a scoundrel roll? <laughs> that would indeed be a scoundrel roll. Yes. Let's see what we can do. Would anyone have made their way upstairs during all of this investigation? Perhaps uh, Mr. Brisby or Miss Warner? Uh, first of all, we'll go upstairs. Yeah, if she sees someone else goes, then she will go. Very well. As you both head upstairs, uh, one thing that Francois sees when he follows the path of destruction, he f makes his way in, and it is the master bedroom, which is large and lavish, but homely. And... He notices that there is a paper, the corner of a paper, sticking out from a uh, bedside cabinet dr uh, drawer. He will retrieve it and attempt to read it. Uh, please give me a physique roll to work to pull it out from this, as the drawer itself seems to be locked, but rather flimsy. Okay, tell me right up. It is a success and an astonishing success. Fantastic. You managed to, with a deft work, uh, flick of the wrist, pull the uh, drawer open and pull out uh, the paper. I will be linking you another uh, artifact. Artifact Dolomite is yours. Perfect. There you are. One thing that uh, Miss Warner notices around the house is that there are uh, some photo frames around the house, but they're empty. They're hanging up on the walls or uh, propped on tables, but they're empty. 
there's dust on the frames, but there's no dust inside. Hmm. Maybe this was a robbery? Uh. Huh. Uh, Miss Castillo, I believe that is a successful role of scoundrel for you. Yes, it is. As you deftly pick the lock, uh, are you trying to hide it from any of your associates? Uh, at this point, no. Very well. Uh, Lady Wyndham and Miss Roberts are able to see that uh, Miss Casillo is quite deftly working uh, a set of tools, and uh, with only a few moments of work, you you hear the satisfying click of the lock coming undone and the door beginning to swing open on uh, oiled hinges. You just get more and more interesting, don't you? Well, you learn to pick up quite a few things when you're on the run. On the run, are you? Yeah, I upset some wrong, some of the wrong people. Hmm. Stabbed some of the wrong people. <laughs> oh, I sense a story. Hopefully later you can enlighten me. Well, we'll see. Inside the, the room is a rather small uh, and rather dusty study. Uh, you can see that it hasn't been touched in what could be possibly years, it, almost even decades, it seems. Thick dust and many things left untidied. You can look around and see that there are several large bookcases that have books up books upon books of various medical practices and you can surmise that this is the study of Dr. Farouk. Anyone who wishes to look in, in the study can go ahead and give me a, another roll, be it intelligence or if they have any other ideas they can roll something else. I will actually allow... Yes. Miss Castillo to roll scoundrel. Mm. Mm. Yes. Definitely rolling. There we go. Oof. Oh no. Nice. <laughs> oh wait, no. <laughs> no I, I pass. <laughs> Not, not 69, but you know, it's still good. <laughs> it is indeed still good. Uh, Miss Warner, yes. it seems that luck has left you for the moment. Are you going to re-roll anything, or are you going to keep that as it is? Uh, I should re-roll, shouldn't I? <laughs> it is entirely uh, up to you. Hmm. Dang it, for both things... Because widely, widely red wouldn't work with this, right? Hmm. No, but it's still. 80. I'd allow it to work for this, as you're investigating akin to uh, the one I'm getting to akin to Sherlock Holmes. Okay. Unfortunately, both of those numbers are still eighty, so <laughs> I do have to reroll something. You would indeed still have to reroll, yes. Okay, let's see. We have. Wine smith, the door, the eye. I would say using what do we have left for the door and the eye? Okay. Can I roll one a one d eight that was on the door and the eye using the bookshelf that's in the eyeball? Absolutely, go right ahead. And I would like to replace my um, first digit, my tens uh, digit, or whatever. By all means. I would also like to do a reroll, if that's possible. Of course, what power are you calling upon? I would like to call on the sun and rags, because all of the skulls are turned inward towards a clock, and I feel like we are operating on perhaps borrowed time. 
fantastic. I will permit it. Uh, what die are you going to utilize from the sun and rags? I'm going to roll one of the d6s. I feel like we should not blow all of our d4s in the first, like, hour of play. <laughs> By all means. And I assume that you're going to uh, be replacing your tens place? Yes. Very well. Just so you all know, you can, of course, use uh, these dice not only to replace the tens place on a fail, but to replace the ones place on a success to perhaps attain a astonishing success, if you wish. Oh, I still failed. Unfortunately. Well, thankfully, the die will continue, will stay with the... Uh, Sun and rags, because when you re-roll, attempt to re-roll and fail, the die remains where it is. Okay, oh, that's nice. Actually, um, are we allowed to use widely read? Because I have a fifty in that. I would absolutely permit anyone who wishes to use widely read to attempt to uh, emulate Sherlock Holmes. To and I would like to do so. that. I would like to do that. Then By all means. My my. Bestie is a member of the Diogenes Club. I feel like I would have learned from him. Fair enough. Yeah, so now I passed. As do I. Alrighty. Uh, have, did those changes make anything in astonishing success? I don't believe so. No. Alright. Well... You all are looking about the study, uh, seeing a few more pictures and a few more uh, little things here and there. And you all, as you are looking at the desk, you notice that there is a small little keyhole in the lower uh, in the lower drawer, not where the keyhole would normally be if one was attempting to uh, lock the drawer itself. Clara, darling. Yeah, let's see what I can do. Bit odd basement, though. It is a bit. Seems like something. Perhaps there's some sort of false bottom. My mother hides her pearls in something similar. Oh, do I have a story to tell you about pearls? With the successful use of scoundrel and a rather more intricate use of the uh, lockpicking tools, given that this is a rather smaller uh, entrance, you hear another very soft, almost inaudible little click, more almost akin to a pop. And as you reach under uh, the desk, it's supposedly trying to reach into uh, the groove of, out uh, up the top to open up the drawer. You pull out what does look like it would be a uh, false bottom of the bottom desk drawer, and you see two things. First off, you see a uh, another paper. It looks to be a document of some kind. And I will get that for you. Yes, it is... Uh -huh. yeah. This will be... For you, this one will be uh, Artifact Corundum. And uh, underneath that postcard is a set of tools. It is a, well, it is a singular tool used in uh, medical practices. It is a set of forceps that one would normally assume forceps to be perhaps, if not cleaned too well, splashed with something red. These seem to have been splashed with 
what look what almost seems to be molten copper with the sheen in the lamplight. Hmm. Well, that's um disturbing. Everyone who sees the forceps is now at risk of dread, and we will get to that at a later point. Hmm. Uh, for me, I want to. Hmm. Hmm. Uh, the human, or as not the player. Is this in French? <laughs> yes, it is in French. <laughs> okay, so my character would understand it. I do not. <laughs> Same. I was actually <laughs> trying to translate. I'm sorry. <laughs> it's all good. I feel free to utilize whatever uh, would make sense for your characters, such as uh, double checking things that they would know with widely read or understand with their various languages. <laughs> Does it mean family first? Who has a widely read of 50 or higher? Me. I do. Um... And I also have a French of uh, fluent. So do I. (laughs) All right. Everybody but the exile. (laughs) No, it's okay. I'm not great either. Everyone who has a widely read of 50 or higher knows this particular little uh, bit of art. It is uh, Kronos. Uh, it is a it is a painting of, well, it is based off of a painting of Kronos uh, devouring his children. Hmm. And the note says family first. How interesting. Uh, you know, family that performs socialistic sacrifice together stays together. Everybody knows this. You does everyone know this? I hmm. di- I didn't know this. Oh, of course. It's oh, just I know common that. knowledge. But oh, I know that. This Kronos is a... didn't sacrifice his children. He ate them so that they couldn't usurp him. And that's just... not a sacrifice. No. They weren't sacrificed for anything. They were. He attempted to destroy them. Hmm. It didn't work, of course. They killed him, but. Or knocked him away, was it? Knocked him away, yes. Do we know if Loretta had any children? Would we know if Loretta had any children, Yep. She had not ever mentioned them in conversation, but I do believe that it is very possible that Francois found something in the master bedroom. Yes, it's Dolomite. (laughs) Uh, Yeah, he's going to show the uh, paper to whoever is interested. The uh, artifact Dolomite. Yes, uh, artifact Dolomite is the one that you'll be wanting to look at in references and announcements. Huh. Uh, I was going to say, uh, take a look at this. It's uh, something, uh, mentioning something in the French Quarter. It looks uh, like Related she to had... uh, Dr. Moish. Hmm. It looks like they had a daughter. Gwendolyn? Yes. Hmm. I would like everyone who has a decent widely read to go ahead and roll that for me. Clara can roll Scoundrel once again. And Aurora will sit there and look pretty. (laughs) Uh, Aurora can roll Intelligence. Nearly succeeded. I failed, and, uh... Ooh, I got a five. Everyone who succeeded, you notice that there is smudging on this, uh... 
document, specifically smudging with the name of the father, name and surname of the mother, as well as the rank and profession of father and the signature description and residence and residence of the informant. Hmm. Clara, this document is forged. Me. What do you make of this, Clara? Well, I was so quick to say I had a child. This doesn't look like hmm. Well, what would you say they happened then? They didn't steal a child, did they? Uh, GM, what is the current, like, in-game day? Date? Uh, it is Friday, uh, June 28th of 1920. I don't know. This child would be in her teenage years, if this were true. Although with the smudging, one would suppose that they took someone else's... Birth certificate and altered it, perhaps? That's nice. Right. Hmm. If the redhead had a child for over a decade, she would have told me. Yeah. She never okay. seems to be the kind that would settle down and start a family, but I look at the date of this document, it says. 31st of May. That was almost a month ago. Maybe this person, this daughter, or uh, adopted daughter, is still in the city. Audrey, with your rather intense uh, focus, these spirits guide you not towards the document as a whole, but to the smudging. You can feel the rage that you felt in the uh, echoing in the house from the area, the smudging of name and surname of mother. And as you look at the smudging, you believe that you can begin to make out the first name mm. and you think it says Audrey. Hmm. I I think I see something. Um. Uh. uh hey, hand me, hand me that, hand me that, um, that, but that birth certificate. And, um, just gonna grab it. Yeah, Francois will give it to her. And, um, I'd like to hold it to the um, up to the light, um, to get a better view to see if I can confirm what that name is through that ink swatch. Um, I think, if I'm, if I'm not mistaken, it's, ah, yes, um, uh, Audrey. The first name is Audrey. As in Loretta's sister? Yes. Come, look. Uh, Jade's gonna lean in close and... There's no... Who's the... Who... Who's the father, then? Mm. I imagine that's something we're going to have to figure out. <gasps> okay. Oh, by the way, while we're here in the study, uh, those of you that are able to read Arabic, could you have a look at this? I, I will take the paper out of my pocket. I will take it. Uh, you are able to, as you are generally fluent, conversationally at least, uh, you're able to read through it, and the beginning says, Roses are red, violets are blue, and it, you just read through the rest. It is poetry. Not very sure. good poetry, but poetry. Uh, well. Uh, Who is it to? Good question, it's... I didn't take the time to ask. It's just poetry and derivative at best. 
But at least she's trying, her darling. Hmm. This is... difficult. You don't... Um... She's gonna look at the group, and then she's she herself got an idea. So I think she's gonna wander off, and she's going to try to look through the studies for any, like, notes that... Moish? Or however you pronounce that? Moish. Moish? That Moish um, wrote about, like, Caesarean and, like, any studies or experiments or notes he's taken on his experimentation. Please give me uh, an intelligence check. Intelligence. Nice. 16. Uh, success. Well done. As you are looking through the study, you see that he has kept rather detailed records since the beginning of his practice to uh, closer to the end of his practice. You see that uh, each one is labeled in years, and uh, the one that uh, came most recently, that uh, would go around to the time when uh, Gwendolyn would have been born, you're able to open it up and begin searching through. Uh, you see, you go to uh, the months that she was born in, and you see a few uh, different births. You see some before and some after. But there is a space missing the day that Gwendolyn was born. This is very odd. She's muttering this to herself and then she'll kind of like perk up because she'll like remember that she's like, oh my god, I'm with other people. Um, and look to the group. I... Um, I found some of his notes but it doesn't show Gwendolyn there's a there's a gap here and you could see pretty much almost every day he did something but suddenly on this day he did nothing on the day that this is weird this is very weird I can tell you that whoever tossed the house didn't like him very much seemed like any photo where he was present and alone got torn off the walls. And all the pictures are... picture frames upstairs are all empty as well. Really? Uh huh. Completely empty? Yeah. Well, that's different from how it was down here. Down here they were just thrown to the floor. Hmm. Whoever has uh, ransacked this house obviously have not been very thorough. That's why I was able to find the birth certificate upstairs in the madame's uh, bedroom. Well, that's not what they were here for. Yeah, it's less that they were not thorough and more that whatever they were looking for wasn't there. Wasn't there another door off of the, like, m like the main entryway that we came in? Like, there was one to the right that we went in, and then there was another one to the left that we didn't go into yet? Uh, you went into the one on the left, you did not go into the one on the right. I would like to go to the one on the right. Uh, the one on the right leads to a rather open, uh, dining area with a la uh, grandiose dining table as well. Does it also look like it's been tossed? Uh, it looks like the cupboards and such have been tossed. It does not look like, uh, whatever they were looking for. You don't get the feeling that whatever they were looking for, they found. Uh, you also see that there is another doorway that leads to a kitchen and pantry. But, uh... Nothing else. The kitchen and pantry don't look like they were messed with too much. It was mostly just the living area. Mm -hmm. You said there was also another door on the side of the living. 
Uh, that was the one that led to the study. Okay, got it. I wonder. There's nowhere else for us to sleep, right? Do we have to sleep here? I don't suppose we have to, but I don't know that we have a method of getting to a hotel. Uh, GM, what time is it? Uh, uh, it is late in the evening. It's reaching about uh, 10, 30, 11 p.m. So it's pretty much pitch dark outside, right? Yes, aside from uh, the far off lanterns on the streets, but there isn't really much. And uh, there is, there isn't like a, a telephone here either. Okay, I start talking about this newspaper. Has this newspaper been like rounds? Uh, one more time, you were cutting out a little bit. Ah, of course. Uh, the newspaper that we found. The newspaper that Aurora has that yeah. she didn't bring up. Okay, so that hasn't been brought up yet, so I will, no. will not comment. <laughs> um, perhaps... I guess if we're stuck here, um, to make it safe, if we can find some way to close the door, maybe? Like, the front door? Is it- is it- it was, like, barely on its hinges, correct? Uh, it was- looked like it had held, if only just, uh, but the actual, like, doorknob had been, uh, crushed. The inside doorknob is still fine, but the outside doorknob is not looking too great. Hmm. Oh. Hmm. How interesting. It looked like they basically crushed it and then forced the uh t forced it to turn. Oh dear. Well, hopefully when uh Mr. Bruno comes in the morning, we can at least find somewhere else to stay but for the night maybe we block the door so we can sleep a little bit safer here that seems like a good idea did anybody um, else happen to find anything while searching um i mean i found this little newspaper clipping um this actually sounds quite um interesting um let me see. Dogs about to be poisoned by the police. Um, a outbreak of fire occurred. Um, and a dog of first shot. Um, oh, a serious affray brought about two. Uh, about <laughs> a serious affray brought about an, by an altercation between two men. Both Italian subjects took place on Saturday night in Gramel Amar in the Gabari region of Alexandria. Hmm. The fight began on the local cafe, but continued to one of the countrymen's homes, where one of the men, uh, by the name of Cesar Gakamo, was stabbed in the heart and died. Hmm. He, uh, his murderer, um, Ufrazio Pensa, took extraordinary decisions to remain in Gakamo's quarters, blocking the windows with Gakamo's possessions and cutting his own hair and feet. The following morning, neighbors reported strange sounds to the authorities. Police arrived to find Pensa talking excitedly of strange dreams, still locked in total darkness in the murdered men's rooms. I believe... The violent murder caused a nervous breakdown, and Pensa was ir irrevocably mad. He was arrested and is now under consular authority. Dreams? Jade and Aurora. Please give me rolls of either bright arts or night arts. 
Ooh, anyone else that. who ha anyone else who may have uh, night arts or bright arts can also roll. I will do night arts. I will do bright arts. I will also do night arts. I will hmm. do nothing because I have none of that because I like to party. <laughs> I don't know which one to do. I think well, I... Well, your bright arts are a little bit higher, so you might want to go with that one. I might... What do we have left? I kind of want to see if I can, um, if I can do amazing, fantastical, wonderful things with that 43. I want to see if I can, um, um, can I roll one of our D4s? Try to turn that 43 into a 44. It is your choice. Mm -hmm. Uh, I can fail here, but I'll be all using uh, Sun and Rags 1d6. Well, actually, wait, that wouldn't really work since the sun's already set. Um, I use the uh, door in the eye because we're trying to uh, discover something else. So that's like a metaphorical door, I guess. Door to knowledge. Let's see if you can open it. So we are specifically using a uh, witch die from which card? I know that you're using a door on the eye. Mm -hmm. uh, which die are you using from the door on the eye? 1d6. Okay. And which die uh, are you using, uh, Legacy? Hmm. I think... Oh, he's using the d6 from the door on the eye? He he is. Um, I think I'll use the um. I think I'll use the D eight from the door in the eye. Alrighty then. Um, I'm thinking about potentially using the D four from the Lion Smith to turn potentially turn this into an uh, what is it? God is winking. The god is winking would be if you just completely turn it into a one, yes. All right. And as we can tell, the lion smith is clearly... has something to do with fighting. Very much. Very violent, the lion smith. Especially locked in his battles with the oh, colonel. Oh, I got um, I got a forty-four. An astonishing success. Wonderfully done. I've also gotten a on one. Astonishing success. Oh, come on! <laughs> Unfortunately, as that was still considered a success, the die is still spent. Yep. So, everyone who succeeded knows that. Cutting of the hair or cutting of the f of the sole of the feet is a ritual. It is a it is a small ritual that has begun to circulate in some of the more occult circles to protect oneself, especially to protect oneself while sleeping. Hmm. Our individual who got a forty four knows that specifically these this ritual calls upon the power of a being known as the moth hmm. that is that through release of chaotic energies prevents you from being interacted with or should prevent one from being interacted with with other powers from the mansus Interesting. I'm going to relay the information to the rest of the group who uh, and, hasn't figured this one out yet. Yeah, and I'm going to relay the more in-depth information. Yep. Uh, so, Miss Warner, mm -hmm. as a... Uh, actually, uh, Miss Roberts, do you talk about the moth and the mansus? I do. 
the only ones that uh miss warner you are one of the only ones that actually knows of the mensis yeah the other three uh don't <laughs> <laughs> um he knows but i don't so what would i say <laughs> Uh, it is just interesting to you that there is another individual who knows of the of the Mantis as a whole, oh. who might have begun to walk the woods uh, surrounding the walls of the Mantis. And as uh, your book that you are reading, walk traveling at night, spoke, the Mantis has no walls. As any student of the histories knows, the Mantis has no walls. Hmm. How do you... She's going to look amazed, but also confused, but also somewhat excited, looking at um, Aurora and go, you know of the Mansis? Mm. Well, of course, darling. Um, I do dabble in the occult. I'm not as dumb as I look. You hardly look dumb. Um... <laughs> But, huh? Uh, um, she's going to turn to the group and explain what she can about the Mensis to those who do not know. Um, the Mensis is insert <laughs> to the group. <laughs> Jade goes on to explain the idea of the Mensis as being a another place outside of time. One that is full of occult knowledge and esoteric entities of great power and great horror. One where if one can walk within it and bypass its many doors can reach great levels of intelligence and enlightenment beyond mortal understanding. To put it succinctly at least. <laughs> So no it's, casual. <laughs> so it's crazy that I've finally met another that knows about it. I've spent many, well, most nights just awake from well, not being able to sleep, of course, but also just thinking and reading. And she's gonna like pat her book that she has and goes, "This, this, this, this book has told me so much, but I just, but still so little." And, um. Uh, yes, this is bad, but also good that there's evidence that there's others that know about this, but this is bad because they killed someone. Um, or did they? Were they told to do it? Hmm. Worth noting that the second Jade started to try and, did, like, explain what was happening, uh, Margaret got bored and walked away. That's fair. <laughs> She's still um, rambling. <laughs> well, I mean, to be fair, I, I, you know, hate to admit it, but I've, I've touched. I mean, how, how do you think I'm able to do what I do? Well, my I assumption know. was lying, mostly. No, that darling. Too. I'm able also to touch it in ways that most normal people can't. Also, are... Okay. Uh, I think, Jade, it, it might be better for you if you get more sleep and do less reading. Excuse me? I mean, I'm sorry. Uh, no, thank you. Actually. You just uh, seem uh, somewhat fatigued, that's all. Yeah, the, um... I think it's best for me to not sleep. I get my comfort from my book. Also, I don't believe anybody's mentioned this yet, but it seems that Miss Gwendolyn Farouk received a grant recently. From who? Um... Or what? Substantial grant. Uh, the University from the Curia. It's a Welsh organization. Uh, she studies ancient archaeology. 
Jeez. Do you, does, does it say when she received it? It doesn't say in particular, but it seems recent, otherwise it wouldn't be in the newspaper. Well, one would assume. Hmm. This is so weird. Fascinating. Hmm. So... I wonder, maybe tomorrow morning, if we can stop by the hospital and see if they- or whoever supplies this paperwork and see if they know anything about this? Yes, it's a good idea. Hmm. Very much so. It, it may also be worth checking out this university here. <gasps> I, I would love to go to the university. Well, it seems that makes one of us. <laughs> Might be worth it to go check out a, um, a, a, a library. Yeah, that would be great um, too. Or maybe like an occult shop of some sort. Maybe a place where we can poke around and find more information about um, uh, these rituals and such. Um, something, something tells me that a lot of this kind of plays in key with one another. Yeah. Um, we have a lot on hand to deal with, I guess, if we're going to find... We're trying to find Aubrey, right? Or... Trying to find Audrey. 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 But it seems that... Finding who could potentially be her daughter might be a good first step. Uh-huh. And maybe finding out why uh, there's a lot of anger in this... Uh, in this birth record. Do you feel anything in this house? I don't know if that's how this works. Yeah, darling, I feel lots of things, but it's mostly coming from this one piece of paper. I mean, you can practically feel the anger energy, like, radiating through it. It's very, um... <clears throat> words, words, word. Disrupting? Disrupting. I like that word, yes. <laughs> Aurora. Yes. If you would like to attempt to feel other things within the house, you can give me a roll of Night Arts. Okay. Woo! A one! Hell yeah! Yeah, God. let's go! God seems to be winking. Winking! Winking! winking with an group. Eye. <laughs> <laughs> you close your eyes and begin thinking of the small mantra that you had found that lets you more thoroughly and intensely focus. And you feel that rage is so overwhelming, but you are able to push past it. There is sorrow in this house. There is an intense love that is tinged by that sorrow. But also a sort of melancholic acceptance. Don't know of what, but you feel that every one of these emotions is entwined, likely coming from the same source. Oh my. Oh dear. Actually, no, I'm, I'm picking up on something. What is it? Well, I mean, that anger is just radiating all over the place, but like, if you, if you hone in and you really pay attention, um, there's a lot of melancholy and sorrow and love and and it all and all of these different emotions they just seem to pile in but it's all coming from the same it's all coming from the same source 
and she kind of like clenches onto that piece of paper for a moment. Um, her eyes still staying closed. Oh my, yes. Oh. Oh. oh, I'm getting very um, I'm getting chills just thinking about it. Um, maybe we should grab something to eat, and she's gonna look to the group, and possibly figure out where we're going to sleep, and possibly block the door so we don't get um murdered in the middle of the night, or mm. at least our stuff stolen. Who's getting murdered? Margaret is standing <laughs> in the door uh, coming from like the dining room and she has a <laughs> bottle in one hand and a glass in the other. Nobody uh, if I can help it. Potentially or rather, us. none of us. If I can yeah. help it. I don't know about the rest of you, but I have no intention of dying. Um, I was thinking maybe we eat and or choose rooms and also bundle, buckle bunker? down um before we lay down for the night does anyone here know how to cook i i i hmm. can cook but it's not the best i eat junk to be honest oh i could whip us up something quick hmm. yes that's right she's a medium and a chef <laughs> medium chef <laughs> Uh, as you head into the kitchen and the larder as a whole, it seems fairly well stocked. It seems like it was stocked uh, beforehand to prepare for your arrival so that you would have something to eat. Uh, it's fairly well uh, provisioned. You're able to put something together fairly easily. Lady Wyndham is even able to find uh, some English muffins. Excellent. Uh, the bottle... Uh, does not seem to be of anything too hoity-toity. It seems to be of a Egyptian beer. Uh, you do not know how to pronounce it. It is, uh, it's just H-Q-T. Um, it's no Chevalier Montrachet, but it will do, I suppose. I am surprised we are able to find alcoholic drink here, I read. I've read the uh, native people of this land do not drink alcohol. Anning, you should really remember that you shouldn't remember, you shouldn't believe everything you read. There has a lot been. of people claim that they don't do a lot of things, and then you actually get around them and you find out how very wrong those perceptions are. I suppose that is right. I suppose, also suppose that is why we must uh, investigate uh, into these. Uh, documents tomorrow that we cannot simply believe what is written on them. Hmm. Um, I've definitely, uh, Jade has definitely gone back to reading her book while everyone's at the table. She's like nibbling on whatever has been made, but she's like back to reading and trying to connect what she reads with what we've experienced so far here. Um, so that's what she's doing right now. Fair enough. Uh, it's getting to the, after your rather impromptu late night meal. It's gotten to the point where it's hard to keep focus, given how late it is. And it is about time for everyone to retire for the evening. It's even push, getting to where it's pushing uh, almost into the next day. With a little bit of uh, work, uh, people are able to push some small uh, cupboards and drawers to be in front of the door after what little good locking it from the inside is able to do. You're able to make sure that it is uh, barricaded and that you are all safe. There are bedrooms upstairs where Two people can stay in, in each room. Alright. 
How many rooms are there in total? Uh, four, if you include sleeping in the master bedroom as an option. Uh, Francois is gonna hog the master bedroom. <laughs> uh, you said there's four in total? There are four rooms in total, including the master bedroom. Margaret is also... Can... Margaret is going to take a bedroom for herself. <laughs> <laughs> Um, Jay, do you want to split a room with me? Yeah, I, I wouldn't mind. I uh, probably won't sleep too much, but um, I'll try not to keep the lights on while I read. Oh, no, 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 no. It's completely fine. Um, My roommate is, uh, is a reader as well. She's, um, she's... Quite studious. Nobody wants to share a room with the scary knife lady. <laughs> I mean, you can share a room with us too. <laughs> That's fine. I'm yeah. fine with that. <laughs> to be yeah, totally yeah. fair, Margaret probably wouldn't have said no, but she also was like, um, well, you know, I'm good enough to get my own room. And there's probably room in the master bedroom, but, you know, Francois is the only guy here, so. <laughs> Ew, boys have cooties. Everybody knows this. Yes. You're right. I've read up about it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I've heard about it. Don't everything the books say. <laughs> How dare you? <laughs> you can stay with us if you need, but there's not another bed. But I guess I oh, can I sit up in I a chair. Be all right. Oh. Okay. All right. Good night, everyone. Yeah. Um. Have a have a splendid night. <laughs> I just need to try to sleep. Right. <laughs> so, you all retire to your respective bedrooms. Uh, is anyone going to sleep immediately? Is anyone trying to stay up? <laughs> you know it. <laughs> Jade will going stay up for as long as she can. Very well. Clara's also gonna try to stay up. Yeah, um, um, Aurora will also try to stay up. I will sleep right away. I'll maybe try to take a shower first if that's possible, but... <laughs> uh, there's a, there's a, uh, bath. There isn't much of a shower at the place with the the, With the g g g, -g ghost in it, I'm okay. <laughs> uh, he will clean himself with whatever is at the, his disposal. Fair enough. You're able to uh, clean yourself uh, properly. There seems that there were enough uh, toiletries from uh, Lady Farouk's uh, trips to the more Western civilizations. From back to London or Paris or to other such areas. And as you go to sleep. Uh, others are attempting to stay up. Clara, I'm assuming you are waiting. For, you are hoping to catch any incoming threats. Yep, that's the plan. Fair enough. Everyone who is attempting to stay up, please roll me physique. <laughs> oh, by a stroke of luck, I managed to pass. <laughs> I did not. <laughs> so, as you all are working to stay up, it gets into the next day, and then it gets closer to half past. And a wave of melancholy and of exhaustion begins to wash over all of you. Jade, you are still reading through uh, Traveling at Night, and you get to the point where you're feeling like you really want to stay up more, but as you reach the, the final chapter, uh, you just don't think you can keep your eyes open much anymore. You have uh, It is to the point where you feel like you have to resign yourself to sleep. Do you do anything to 
to uh, prepare yourself for the sleep. Per perhaps a ritual to try to enter the mansus. Yes, because when she falls asleep, it's always like a brief feeling of fear before she falls asleep because she never knows what her dreams are going to bring her. So she kind of does like a, she thinks of different quotes from different books. She's really enjoys and different artists or different authors. And she'll like run through different lines and paragraphs and she'll just quote different books in different languages and different whatsoever and then say it enough times that hopefully her brain will let her safely and peacefully sleep. Very well. Uh, those who are still awake, please, if you wish to stay awake for any longer, please give me a roll of determination. And one moment while I check something in the rules. Sleep deprivation. Who's that? We don't know her. Hey, let's let's fucking let's see. Eh, nope, I sleep. <laughs> Sleeper time. <laughs> And I have once again returned with the rolls. Are those successes for either of you? Nope. Uh, mine is. No, no. Very well. <laughs> Aurora, you fall asleep about at one o'clock. Mm -hmm. And do you do anything before you uh, fall asleep? Do you perhaps try to ward yourself from any of the more loud spirits so uh, they do not interrupt you actually um it, it, seeing as i've been having quite a um a, a, a touch with this house and because i've been able to feel the energies um i kind of want to shift my sleep into trying to kind of connect and dive dove deeper into it i want to see if i can if i can pull anything okay so you perf are going to perform a small ritual to, to to open yourself to the energies instead yes okay uh you are able to alter your mantra a little bit to not focus but to just leave yourself open as you drift away into sleep the final syllable leaving your mouth and inviting in other beings and you get this warmth almost like gratitude as you begin to feel something clara uh you are staying up past one it's getting close to 1 30 and you can feel yourself beginning to drift uh there has there, as you've looked at the windows, there have been no others that wander these streets, no other threats that you can see. Do you permit yourself to finally rest? Yeah, I suppose so. After making sure that uh, your bedroom is barricaded with a uh, chair that uh, is, lo is lodged under the uh, door handle, uh, you find a spot away from the door and are able to uh, get comfortable as you can while making sure that your back is to a wall and you drift off to sleep. And all of you begin to dream. Jade and Aurora. Aurora, you opened yourself to the powers around you, to the spirits, hoping for entrance. Mm -hmm. 
Mm -hmm. And when you finally closed your eyes, the you didn't. Your last sight wasn't of the world around you. It was of a light that you accepted into yourself. Jade, as you were hoping to scour the Mansus to possibly walk amongst the wood so that way you might find some small scrap of knowledge, something that could help you with this, you felt like you should fall to the wood as you had begun to try in your more recent uh, ritualistic experimentation. But you don't. You find yourself not in the wood, but in a room with Francois and Margaret and Clara and Aurora. All of you find yourselves in this room together. What is this place? Wait, you... Look, if you all are going to be following me in my dreams, I'm going to need entirely more alcohol. Wait, you're all present? You're, like, you? Not just what I'm dreaming and thinking you are like? Well, no, obviously you're all what I'm dreaming. Well, Ladies, let's not flatter ourselves here. This place is a nursery with a cot in the center of the room. You see that there are windows along each wall. You do not see a door out, though. From the windows, there is this soft golden light that streams through it, almost invading it, as opposed to simply being permitted in. You can smell flowers, uh, freshly baked mm. bread, and roast beef. The flowers smell almost of jasmine to the uh, more trained nose of Lady Wyndham when it comes to uh, perfume. Flames and red flowers dance along the edges of the room, singing what could be a lullaby. The lullaby itself speaks. Little baby in the dark house, you have seen the sun rise. Why are you crying? Why are you screaming? You have disturbed the house god. Who has disturbed me, says the house god. It is the baby who has disturbed you. Who scared me, says the house god. The baby has disturbed you. The baby has scared you. Making noises like a drunkard who cannot sit still on his stool. He has disturbed your sleep. Call the baby now, says the house god. This is the strangest dream I've ever had. Something was not making much friends here. As you look about and try to find, perhaps try to find a way out, Clara, you look to the corner of the room where you had begun to witness the, the nursery as a whole. And in that corner is a individual a rather tall and somewhat gaunt man smiling gently at you. Uh, you... You know him. You simply know him as the Gentle Father. Anybody else see him? As you all look, you too see the individual, and you all know him to be the Gentle Father. Um... Sir, have, have we, like, seen him before? Like, can we remember having seen him before, or is this just, like, an innate, immediate knowledge? It is innate, immediate knowledge that almost... It, it is less just like it was always there. It's more like it has forced its way into your mind in an instant. 
Margaret is immediately going to scrunch her nose like she's not thrilled with any of this. Um, gentle father? How do we get out of here? Where is the baby? The smile brightens to the point of almost being too intense to look at. And you see that there is a cot in the center of the room, like a crib that is giving off a uh, less intense light. I really don't like children. Inside the crib, you do not see a baby, but a shimmering glass doll with painted yellow eyes and a painted smile across its face. Does it look like the gentle father? There are similarities. The smile for one and the light for another. Oh, I like the doll even less. There's something um, very wrong happening here. What was in the beer? This is this is this is more than beer or we're in the I think we're in the mansa? I'm not sure. I thought the mansa would be brighter or less. I'm not sure where we are, to be honest. Um, and I've never had people here with me. Um, or I don't never been conscious enough to under. Anyhow, um. You begin to hear a flute beginning to play a intense and haunting noise. I will go to the crib and attempt to pick up the doll. Francois, you can move to the crib and reach inside, your hand touching the, the glass face of the doll. It feels like the warmth of skin. And you hear the rather intense scream of a young woman before you all wake up in a jolt in a cold sweat. It is now morning, Saturday, June the 29th, and you are all at risk of fascination again. I would like everyone to please go ahead and roll me determination. Those of you who did a ritual to protect yourself can roll determination with advantage, meaning that you get to uh, essentially uh, let me double check what advantage is, but I believe it's a roll of... You get to roll the, the uh, tens place. Oh, no. Nice. What? <laughs> nice. <laughs> Twice um, in one session? How did we get so lucky? We're blessed. <laughs> advantage means that you will roll with your with uh, determination plus ten. Those of you who opened yourself to outside powers roll with disadvantage, meaning it's your determination minus 10. I would like to re-roll the tens play, play die with the so, 1d... F uh, I rolled a th 3? That is a very intense success. It. I was meaning like your target number minus 10. Oh, okay. So yeah, you're definitely very fine. Um, I, I'd like to roll the 1d4 from the sun and rags because it's morning. Fair enough. F feel yeah. free. Now that it's a new day, do we get the new card? Uh, we will take care of that in the next session. I wanted to get uh, everyone's fascination and such out of the way first. That puts me at 19. So I'm okay. Did anyone else fail? Uh, I failed. I'll reel with uh, Sun and Regs uh, D8. Very well.
and I've converted that into a success. Well done. One moment while I adjust the regard. I'm assuming nothing good happens for me getting an astounding success. Uh, with the astounding success, you... Did you get an astounding success? Yeah, I rolled a 33. Oh, then yes. Uh, you not only are do not gain any sort of fascination, but any and all risks of fascination are wiped clean. If you've succeeded, for those of you who just regularly regularly succeeded, uh, one instance of risk of fascination is wiped away. Miss Warner, I believe that you had two risks since you had the dream and you also saw your reflection. Mm -hmm. You will retain that risk for the remainder of the day, at least until the next time I call for a check for fascination. Understood. It is another a new day, one perhaps tinged by the rather intense dream you all had. Was it shared, or was it just an odd nightmare? Perhaps we will find out more in the next session. Thank you all for watching. This has been the beginning of the Lady Afterwards. Stay safe.